Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to Badger Workshop. I used to work as a chef and I've got quite a collection of knives. I have this leather case that I used to carry them in, which made me look like a bit of a serial killer. I'm just going to pick out five of my most used ones. A bread knife, a couple of chef's knives, a serrated paring knife and a plain paring knife and then I can measure how long a board would need to be for them to go on. A few weeks ago I made a spice rack out of oak, so as this is going to go next to it I'm going to make it out of oak again. This is some rough sawn oak, and first I'm just going to cut it down to a more manageable size. I can now take it over to the planer, get one surface planed flat, and then get one edge done. With the two edges done, I can reconfigure the machine and get it thickness down to size. This board is far too wide to be a knife rack, so I'm going to cut it down and hopefully be able to get two projects out of this. This is going to be a magnetic knife rack and I want to be able to hide the magnets so I need to cut off a veneer thin piece from the front of this. So I just raise the blade slightly higher than it and then I can set it so it can make a very thin rib. This is perhaps taking 2mm off because I want the magnets to be able to work through the wood. You'll see what I mean later on. I got some of these rare earth magnets from Amazon, I'll put a link down below under hardware. They're 60mm long by 10cm wide and 3mm deep. They also come with these sticky back tabs to stick them on, but I don't think I'm going to use those. So that I can drill consistent holes, I'm going to clamp this scrap bit of wood to my drill press to act as a fence. I don't want the magnets to go to the end of the wood. I want there to be enough room to get some screws in to actually attach it to the wall. So I'm just going to mark in 3cm from each end. Now with a 10mm Forstner bit and the depth set to 3mm, I can drill a series of holes. I can start my first line, sliding the bit of wood along the fence and drilling all the way along to the second line. When I've got that done, I can flip the bit of wood around and then do the same from the other side. Another way of doing this may be to use a router, but I felt a bit more comfortable using the drill. With all the holes drilled, they need quite a lot of cleaning up, so first I'm going to get my chisels nice and sharp by getting some compound on a strop and giving them a polish. Now I can use a chisel to work my way along, cleaning up the edges of these holes. This doesn't have to be hugely precise or particularly pretty because it's never going to be seen. It just needs to have enough clearance for these magnets to fit in. With it all roughly cleaned up I can get a magnet in and see if it's going to fit below the surface all the way along. And it does. So I can get them attached. Now I could have made the holes deeper and used those double sided sticky tabs but I've decided to epoxy them in instead. I get a small batch mixed up and then spread along the line of the holes. I've got five of these magnets stuck to each other and then I can just be lowered down onto the epoxy and pushed down. I can get the second row put in place and then I just leave it for the epoxy to dry. When it's all dry, I give it all a sand down to make sure that's a nice flat surface so I can get the two bits of wood glued together in a bit. I can get some PVA wood glue put on and spread out between the magnets. The 2mm thick piece can then be put in place and lined up with all the edges. Then I get loads of spring clamps on to hold it down. 
I leave this overnight to dry to make sure it's properly set up. I'm going to add a round over to the edge to blend in where the two bits of wood join. I do this in two shallow passes so I don't damage that thin veneer and it does a great job of blending the two together and I really can't see where the cut was. I'm going to attach this to the wall with some brass screw cups so I mark out a centre point at both ends and then I can use the same 10mm drill bit to drill these holes. The Faulkner bit leaves a little pointed mark in the centre of the holes, then I can use a 4mm drill bit to drill through this for the screw to go through. I can give it all a quick sand down and then I can get these brass inserts installed. I just get a dab of super glue in the holes, then I can get them put into place and tap down. And that's it all done, apart from finish. The other thing I want to get done is a holder for some kitchen towel super absorbent because I'm worth it. I've got this oak dowel that's going to fit through the roll and I've got the off cut from where I made the knife rack. I want the dowel to overhang either end so I mark out how long I want it and I can get it cut down to the length on the miter saw. I can then also get that oak off cut cut down to the same length. I want these two pieces to have the same look so I'm going to set the saw up and rip this bit down to the same width as the knife rack. How I want this to work is for that bit of wood to be screwed to the wall and then the dowel to be suspended below it by a couple of leather straps. I can use my leather strap cutter to make a couple of straps one inch thick. If you wanted to make this you could just buy leather belt blanks. So the towel is going to go onto the rail and then it's going to have one strap either side to suspend it. I want the oak to have a recess for these straps to go into so I mark out where the straps are going to go. With my cross cut sled on the table saw I can then raise the blade up to double the thickness of the leather. With that done I can just nibble away and remove all that waste. For just these two slots I didn't change out my flat tooth blade so they need a little clean up. Get the piece secured down with a hold fast and then I use a chisel to just clean up these slots. So now just for a lot of repeating myself, as I want these to look the same I'm going to add the same round over, drill the same holes in either end for those brass inserts to go into, give it all the sand down and then get those inserts installed. Now both pieces are ready for finish. The spice rack got some Danish oil, but that knife holder is definitely going to get a bit more wear and tear, so I want something a bit more hard wearing. So I'm going to apply some hard wax oil. I'll put a link to it down below on my Amazon page under finishes. After the first coat's dried for four hours, I give it a second coat and then leave it overnight to dry. With the finish dried I can get these leather straps installed. First I need to determine how long they need to be. So I get them put in, get the towel put on and then adjust it to its the right length. When I'm happy with the length I can then trim the leather off flush with the wood. With the first one cut to length I can then use it as a template and get the second one cut. To get these straps installed I'm just getting them pushed into place and then I'm going to drive some screws through the leather into the oak. I'm not punching any holes in the leather, these screws have got a drill point to them so I'm just driving them straight through. And that's them all done, I've got a nice kind of matching pair, a place to put my knives and my kitchen roll. Now I just need the time and money to update the rest of the kitchen. Thanks for watching, thanks to my Patreons, and please subscribe for more videos.